Good afternoon all. On behalf of Anna Violet Arts and Science College, Ambattu, Chennai, IQAC, and Department of BCom, Accounting and Finance, in association with IoT Academy, we welcome the faculties of Anna Violet Arts and Science College, Chennai, and the participants joined here for the sixth session of national level PDP on basics of research methodology. Let me introduce the resource person of today's session, Dr. Sri Ranjini Moksha Gundam. Dr. Sri Ranjini Moksha Gundam, the great granddaughter of Bharataratna, Sir Moksha Gundam Vishveshwaraya, is working towards the advancement of the society directly by imparting knowledge. She is the faculty of management, Sri Jagatguru Bala Gangadhara College of Management Studies, Bangalore. Her qualifications include MBA and PhD in management. She has eight years of experience in teaching and research. Dr. Sri Ranjini has rendered her services as principal, professor, research supervisor, and has memberships with national and international professional bodies. She has also presented and published numerous articles, textbooks, and is an editorial board member of high esteemed journals. She is also a certified soft skills trainer, German language teacher, NLP practitioner, and life coach. We welcome you, ma'am. And with this, we hand over the session to Dr. Sriranjini. Ma'am, please. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Hope I am audible and visible now. Yes, ma'am. You are audible and visible. Right. Thank you. So, shall we start the session? Yes, ma'am. Right. Okay. Yes. A warm welcome to one and all present here. And a very good afternoon. So, probably from five days, you have been learning about the uh, basics of uh, research methodology. So today my presentation it includes the plagiarism tools for enhancing efficacy of research. Right. Okay. So we should just go with the basic definition. You all would have known by this time since a week. Um, when we speak something about the research, so it's nothing but the organized investigation in and study of materials as well as sources wherein. Uh, if we are doing research, we are trying to establish facts and we want to give our own original or novel conclusions. So we have a concept called academic integrity. What does this mean? Is it really important in doing research? Yes. It is nothing but uh, the importance or say the significance of each and every researcher being honest, say ethical, systematic, in their own academic work what they have been doing and uh, when we have academic integrity it tells us that we are not misrepresenting anything we are not falsifying our findings or we are also not taking credit for somebody else's works similarly we also would have heard about the terminology academic dishonesty or we call it academic misconduct so this speaks of actions which undermines or you can call it as this weakens um, destabilizing activity or something which is challenging the academic integrity just now what we discussed so all these concepts are really critical uh, in the world of say professional academic research as well as when we speak something about publishing so what will happen in this context it could be the complaints or say claims uh, allegations or even you can call it as blames blames of misconduct all this will play a very very critical role right we have many a type of academic dishonesty so uh, we have a table for that right so academic dishonesty it comes in many a forms right so it also varies widely based on the based on its severity. Say it could be something from taking uh, or plagiarizing, or even when you are buying an essay, thesis, dissertation, article, anything. So discuss discussing about these types of academic dishonesty. First of all, we know what is cheating. It is nothing but we or anybody for that matter, students, scholars, teachers, everybody, whoever uses the unauthorized sources or say it could be the strategies or even devices right so why do we do this these unauthorized materials because we want to achieve an outcome 
that i i myself i have not worked on my own it examples would include something like say copying or looking at someone else's works or answers especially in an exam or a test all these things it amounts to cheating so we also have decide it means we are either lying or falsifying some information we have contact cheating so somebody a student or a research scholar he or she they'll be either paying or say persuading or you are just bribing somebody to help you cheat it could be buying exam answers or say some question papers some already pre written essays or anything entrance to any uh, institution university all this would be something that comes under contract cheating we also have impersonation so somebody would be impersonating another pers person especially in exams or in tests right a person who will show up to write a test or an exam in another's place it could be online test offline test anything or people also uh, practice buying the term papers assignments all these things see what will happen if you submit work that somebody else has written for you whether you have paid it or not that is the secondary matter but this comes under academic misconduct conduct then bribing yes we all know students would offer a professor a money goods or services in exchange for a some kind of say uh, passing grades that's it then falsifying or even misrepresenting uh, uh, duplicating an academic record or say some other supporting or associate documents see once the materials submitted to the university or any institution college for that matter for a program wherein you have applied for um or say altering or omitting or forging any of those documents it would revoke the admission of the particular student or scholar though you are in the uh, mid of your program this would take place for a do uh, for uh, practicing the academic misconduct then then we have unauthorized or say illegal collaboration this is say some some kind of conspiracy see what will happen sometimes Uh, uh when people they are assigned some kind of assignments or say group projects students what they'll do they'll not work on their own so uh, whatever they want to produce on their part of the individual works they'll not do but what will happen the instructor or the supervisor he or she they would have expected you to work on your own now what is happening uh, again you are collaborating with other students so this is called unauthorized collaboration so to produce your assignments or projects anything you are doing this first of all it is the student's responsibility see to find out if at all that st particular student he or she is allowed to work with others or is the is your instructor or your supervisor is expecting you to complete the assignment completely on your own right okay then use of unlawful aids during a test or exam anything see there are uh, unofficial you can call them as unsanctioned aids so all this it would comprise of anything that has not been cleared with your teacher's permission or institution they are not allowing it during the any kind of tests, examination anything uh people who are writing the exams or tests they are allowed to have only the permitted items inside the exam hall and all other possessions belongings including your phones headsets most of the things they are not at all allowable and we all know that if at all some student is caught say using any type of uh, these kinds of un unofficial support or say service uh, uh, it could be a uh, he or she could be carrying some kind of say uh, cheat sheets or a smart watch using a smart watch everything it comes under again cheating so one should be very very familiar with the university regulations once i enter inside a exam hall how i should be especially in india because many are rules differ differ from institution to institution or even university everywhere we have different rules right then coming to the improper access or you can call it as uh, even blocking of materials or systems all these things will come under this see somebody uh, doing some kind of conspiracy uh this involves say hiding or destroying materials which is available to all for example some library materials course materials or uh, with some negative reason 
the person he or she they are trying to overload the online system or say the digital system so by this what they are trying to do they are trying to prevent the completion of an assignment or any kind of test or even stealing the term paper or a test paper anything right they are improperly obtaining this and they are then selling or distributing them again this is a uh, this is also one kind of fraud or academic misconduct then, distribution of others ip intellectual property as we all know the intangible property somebody else's creativity somebody else's innovation inventions patents uh, uh, even copyrights literary or artistic works all these things all these things what will happen they are like circulated unconventionally or well, through a third party they'll do all these kinds of transactions and they'll not be having the consent to do so from the original author or the writer then data fabrication what will happen uh, the research scholar or the student he or she will misrepresent the uh, results of the research wanted either they'll modify the experimental data uh, to show some kind of uh, uh, non existing or something uh, non real correlation because they just want to support their hypothesis right then even misrepresentation also comes under this it is something like intentionally you are trying to omit some part of your data so that uh, what is happening you are deceiving your teacher or the guide or even the institution where you are studying for your own academic advantage uh, then speaking about the disruptive behavior see this is any kind of say action practice which is actually restricting or affecting any kind of teaching learning process especially it could be not only all these factors but disrespecting your professor teacher or the institution dragging your fellow students all this will come under the uh, say disruptive behavior whether it could be physically in class or online anything and uh, even if you are just being say inattentive to the course during a lecture or you are just failing to silence your cell phone during the class and thereby you are disturbing the whole class or some kind of activity say that is inappropriate posting some kind of unrelated material on the discussion boards all this will come under disruptive behavior then the last one i have just put it wanted to be in red color this is a plagiarism so red always it shows negativity okay you would have heard of this word and most of us we just do not want to discuss anything about this word in particular right so plagiarism means as we all know we are using somebody else's work we you anybody who is doing the work so we are not giving any proper credit or acknowledgement to the original author <coughs> excuse me in academic writing what is happening the plagiarizing the act of plagiarizing it comprises of using any kinds of say words or ideas images information from a particular source or from different sources for that matter so you are not all properly citing them so all this will come under plagiarism see universities uh, private institutions they detect plagiarism nowadays they use a specialized software uh, once we feed the data in, into it it spontaneously compares the submissions to its database of whatever the text what we have just fed into the system so uh, when we have to define plagiarism it is nothing but stealing someone else's works or ideas and we are passing them off as your own ideas uh, especially in the context of academic writing what does this mean you are quoting someone else's words without quotation marks if you put quotation marks you will understand that is not my words those are not my words but people would also do something else what is it they rewrite so we call it as paraphrasing an idea but again you have to give proper credit to the author which you are not giving and no proper citation would be there again this will come under plagiarism uh say it is also a pertinent or uh you you can call it as the applicable concern uh in the context even outside the academia we all are aware of the high profile examples of plagiarism say 
uh, it could be in the world of uh, politics arts movie making music everywhere listen to this word plagiarism he has copied my work this was this was my music this was my tune right yes uh it is it's not only just the text that can be plagiarized but any kind of creative works yes everything can be plagiarized so why do we consider plagiarism as an evil or say some kind of immoral act because plagiarism is wrong why we are not giving any credit to the original creator of the work because uh uh the credit whatever we wanted to give it is due there because we are using his or her work original author's work right and this is the biggest form of academic dishonesty see whether you are a student who is submitting a paper for a class or you are say you are a researcher or even a uh, teaching faculty who is submitting a paper to a journal or uh, you are writing some kind of dissertation or thesis to submit to an university the work whatever you submit it should be your own work then only you can write your names in uh, caps right uh, in front of your thesis dissertation if you are taking somebody else's work and if you put your name what is the joy in it right okay then uh, see getting credit for the work which you haven't done it obviously affects your own learning but also it is deceiving the readers right you are cheating your readers by uh, claiming that this is my own work this is the book whatever i have written see uh, when i tell that it does not actually mean that you cannot use others works right um uh, see when you you can even draw on existing ideas or any kind of theories research all this would be a key part of your academic writing but it is very very significant so that you should clearly differentiate between your own words what are my own words what is it i have written and what ideas have come from other sources i need to clearly write that and this only this not only gives the proper credit to the works you have referenced but also it helps the readers whoever is reading my book my article my dissertation anything uh, so the readers they can track the sources of my ideas right they can verify the evidence that somebody else was the source this is not my idea we will get to understand that yes we always will be wondering why do people plagiarize is it their fault or say some kind of misdeed or is it because of uh, say ambiguity uncertainty or uh, i am not able to decide myself is it in this what do you think is does academic integrity really matters let's let's see see uh, most of the students and scholars belonging to any university any state say they understand that maintaining academic integrity is say vital very very important but still dishonesty is common or it is it, it's seen everywhere right there are various reasons so that i get desirous you get desirous to resort to these kinds of academic dishonesty what would be the reasons there are n number of reasons it could be whether accidental or deliberately i am doing this plagiarism uh, purposefully i am doing this right it could be accidental or it could be deliberate is what i meant so uh, see lots of times we all will be having pressure to achieve more that could be one reason and i believe that if i take from some source some idea some image anything i will not be caught so i plagiarize what is the big deal in it i lack self confidence i have no uh, prior experience of writing a paper an article i am producing a dissertation nothing i don't know or people could be lazy laziness could be one reason so that i'll bring it from some source and i'll write it as my own uh we have time management struggles right everybody we have that uh we all need more than 24 hours in a day per day so uh, there is some kind of difficulty in pursuing a program or a course mba mca phd you would have enrolled ourselves but i am not able to pursue this program i am not able to totally understand what the professor is telling me so they have told me some uh, few words so based on that i search it on google i'll put it my name and i'll produce it to the university is this what we do no definitely not and 
people also have fear of failing yes i should not fail so some aspiration to get a good grade or even uh, say some kind of confusion about plagiarism i do not know what are the current university or journal uh, policies practices everything all this could be the reasons for practicing plagiarism and most of us we have stress with the volumes of increasing workloads we every day we have it personal professional both even that could be a reason or say i am inattentive to uh, research and publication works or methods when my professor was telling me something i would have attended the course work or not i would have attended uh, some kind of uh, seminars like this or national level fdps yes or no i would have been attending or not i don't know so i just want to now produce some paper my professor has told us and by the end of august i need to uh, bring out a paper so i plagiarize as simple as that I don't care attitude right i just don't care whether it is somebody else's or mine i have to uh, submit something i have done this or there could be even errors while you are paraphrasing rewriting something or when you are citing right but please do uh, remember that academic dis uh, dishonesty it harms you it harms the plagiarized author your peers your colleagues and even the honest learners who put their who put lots of efforts in producing a single paper whether it could be four pages or 14 pages and it it uh, actually harms the whole learning process itself right okay so if at all it contains damaging destructive or say some kind of misleading information whatever i have copied from a source i have copied it but i don't know whether it is it has it contains damaging statements or some kind of uh, destructive statements i do not know again i'll be in problem it could be really dangerous if i uh, uh, properly do not understand what are the fundamentals say examples uh, for example i am doing uh, some kind of lab work i don't know the basics but i am trying to do yes i am posing danger to myself to others around me as well as the environment and even the institution okay and then th these consequences <clears throat> when i plagiarize something it depends on the severity of the offense how much i have copied what i have copied everything will come into matter so uh it it is also dependent on the institution's policies what 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 are the rules of my university what does my institution say about plagiarism right so it can really range from a warning if you if it is your say first offense they would just warn and leave you your superiors or even they could take you till the uh, uh, failing grade they might give you failing grade in course or sometimes an expulsion from your university right yeah so all these things the consequences we shall discuss about this in the forthcoming slides now let's go get into the types of plagiarism yes we encounter numerous types of plagiarism especially in academic writing right and we all have experienced it <clears throat> the first one would be the global or complete plagiarism as the name says that you or somebody for that matter he or she that plagiarizing an entire text or the entire information so um say this embraces paying for an essay or even turning in an assignment completed by someone else and you are trying to claim it as it's my own it's my own work and uh, say you are knowingly or purposefully you are doing this you are being dishonest because it is complete plagiarism word by word you have copied right uh you are also being dishonest about the authorship of the work because somebody else has done this it is not for you it is just meant for your reference but what have you done you have just scratched their name you have put your name is this right never so you are presenting somebody else's work and this is the most severe type of plagiarism right and definitely this will have alarming repercussions so uh one can avoid this kind of plagiarism how one we should write our own essays simple as simple as that okay to ensure that you aren't plagiarizing even by chance also what you can do just consider running your work complete work through a plagiarism checker tool uh, prior to your submission you can do this and later on you can submit this uh, and these tools they work 
they use some kind of advanced database softwares wherein one can scan for the matches between your text as well as the existing text. Next, we shall see the verbatim or direct plagiarism. What does this mean? It means you are directly copying and pasting someone else's words into your own work or document. Here, what is it? What is the mistake you are doing? You are not using quotation marks. You are not citing the source. No attribution, no credit has been given to the original author or the writer who has written it. So this could be something, say, like completely alike to the original text, or somewhat here and there it could be altered. See, uh, basically, if the structure and the majority of the words are matching, are the same as the original, it is called as verbatim plagiarism. Even if you remove a few words or alter a few words here and there, it doesn't matter. It again comes under verbatim plagiarism. How shall we avoid this kind of plagiarism? Right. What I have to do? I need to just quote the original source. From where did I take this particular idea? And the copied text, I can put it in quotation marks. I can also include an in-text citation. So any style can be used according to the publisher guidelines, wherever you are trying to publish your paper. It could be the APA. We all know about it, American Psychological uh, Association. Uh, most of the times it is used by the uh, education field, uh, psychology, uh, even science, science people will use this APA. We have MLA. Modern Association Language Style, which is uh, uh, it is used by humanities. Uh, we have Chicago style, or uh, we have Turabian style. So generally, it is used by the business, history, and fine arts people. Right? Anything according to the requirement of your university or the journal where you are trying to submit your paper, you can use these styles. See, the example also shows that the 34 percent of the uh, content has been copied. In the sidebar, we can see that 34% of the content has been copied. Right. And the next type of plagiarism would be paraphrasing plagiarism. As we all know, what do we mean by uh, paraphrasing? So, uh, rephrasing someone else's ideas and presenting them as if they were your own original or my own unique. I say it's my novel thought, you know, whatever I have written. So, you put a piece of text into your own words what do you do paraphrasing without giving proper citation again it becomes plagiarism after all i have changed i have reworded everything but no you have to give credit you have to give proper citation to the author the, though you are paraphrasing the whole idea behind it was somebody else yes so if you are paraphrasing quoting is an authentic way uh, wherein you try to incorporate the uh, ideas of others into your writing, right? Yes, it becomes a plagiarized work, even when you redraft a few points. So what shall we do? How shall we avoid, uh, while uh, we are paraphrasing, uh, how shall we avoid plagiarism? We can cite other sources. Where all, from where all I took this idea. Just as when we do when we are quoting something. Okay. So. Uh, say, for example, even if you are translating a piece of text from, say, another language without citation. For example, I am writing some paper in English. I have taken some piece of text, say, from some uh, uh, some other language. It could be some Tamil book, Telugu book. Source is there, but even then, it comes under paraphrasing plagiarism. Translated text should also be cited. We should keep it in our mind because again. The language might be changing, right? Still, it is someone else's idea that I am using. So, paraphrasing without crediting the original author is never ever correct. Okay, it might be some some text might be there in Bengali. I am using it. You no know, people in Karnataka or Tamil Nadu might not be knowing that who is that particular author, what was his idea? Because obviously, in the world, what are all there? I cannot know, right? So. Still, I need to credit the give credits to the original author. So, if you correctly cite the source, paraphrasing will never become plagiarism. Rewording is very good, and then please cite the source. Uh, it could be an in-text citation and a full reference. At last, what you give, 
all these things are to be formatted according to the required citation style just now we uh, discussed about three or four styles so make sure that paraphrased text is it is entirely reworded in your own words you try to put in your own words i put an example for paraphrasing so the original text is there on the left side it says the author is doorman the year is 2003 on the right side when we see it says incorrect because many words are reworded see there are some maybe some 15 16 lines are there in the original document now on the right side it is just some six seven lines i have rephrased everything i have understood what that doorman the author says i have put in my own words but still even though i have paraphrased it says it is incorrect why is it because i have not given citation to the original author the same paragraph now i check when i check here it says something is correct the rephrased or the paraphrased text is correct why because at the end if you check something is highlighted in the brackets that is the author's name the year of publication as well as the page number from where did you take that particular passage right now i'm allowing my readers also uh, they can verify from where this has come the source also i have given so this is the perfect example of correct paraphrasing then we have patchwork or uh, we call it as uh, mosaic plagiarism what does this mean people they are copying the phrases or passages uh, any kind of ideas from diverse sources various sources and they try to assemble them into a new text right so and so dot com from some library have got it from some somewhere else i have got it so, from some university have seen this all these ideas i get together i bring it together i assemble them for example i am doing it on some say performance management so wherever i see not only only one site i will be looking for various sites i'll be looking for i'll visit libraries everywhere so each and every, uh, every place I go, I bring one paragraph and now I do some kind of patchwork and I put it as a new text. Is that right? Definitely no. So see, one can uh, marginally or say slightly rephrase passages. So uh, uh, you keep uh, many of the same words or the basic structure when we compare it with the original text or paragraph. Everything would be the same, right? And then the author inserts his or her own words here and there, and he will stitch the plagiarized text together. Now this becomes a messy work, a patchwork. So this plagiarism, it requires more effort. See, when we speak about plagiarism, what will happen? People will think it is easy to plagiarize. But this kind of patchwork, each and every paragraph and every line, I'm getting it from some other source. It, it requires more, more effort. Right, plagiarism is definitely not so easy. Instead, I could have written in my own words. That could have been the best idea instead of doing a patchwork or mosaic plagiarism. And this kind of plagiarism, it is more devious than just copy or pasting from one source. So please make sure that you cite your sources whenever you try to quote or paraphrase, so that we are trying to avoid plagiarism. Simple, right? The example of patchwork plagiarism is put here. See what are all copied on the sidebar you can see so from there and here a few words have been omitted and most of the words are like that okay yes we also have something called self plagiarism what does this mean recycling my own previous work that i i would have submitted already to or uh, to some university institution or i would have published this without uh, proper acknowledgement uh, it could be the text, as I said, images, data, phrases, music, anything for that matter. So any time or any number of times you are using something or someone else's work or you yourself would have created something, you must give, give credit to the source, whether it could be yourself. See, even uh, the accidental plagiarism, it will have serious consequences. Sir, I don't know. I did this by chance. Ma'am, I was not aware of this, but somehow everything is matching. That credit that comes under the accidental plagiarism. By chance, I have done this. I was not aware. It was just unintentional. 
but still it has serious consequences as any other plagiarism could have because what is happening you are presenting a paper or say a piece of data as brand new right i i am a new reader somebody would have done this kind of uh, work self plagiarism i don't know whether he or she would have uh, published the same kind of work or same piece of work earlier or not now as a reader i think it is a brand new right okay moreover what will happen the person who is doing this uh, self plagiarism uh, he or she would have already got the credit for the previous publication now again for the same work the work done one time they want double credit how is it possible okay see except you have some kind of unambiguous permission to copy to do self plagiarism you are not supposed to do so everything will come under plagiarism act only uh reworking the old ideas or say any kind of passages it's it's not definitely considered as plagiarism i have some idea i'm trying to build some other theory some other evidence on it but it is again not plagiarism because i am trying to cite my own previous work and i am making the origin clear from where did this come i am not trying to mislead my readers i am not offering them the earlier work whatever i had done i am not posing as a completely new work or original work so now it does not come under plagiarism uh, reclaiming your own work without acknowledgement is never ever correct uh, the example says here say you are working on a capstone project your last big assignment before graduation so now you have chosen to write a thesis about the effects of brexit on european commerce already you have wrote a paper about brexit for a previous course so you may not see any harm in reusing a section or two sections in your own thesis but please however if you don't cite yourself you are committing self plagiarism see very clearly written right you may also be committing self plagiarism what will happen if you submit an assignment project essay from a previous academic year to the current semester something was uh, submitted in my first semester now it is almost sixth semester or eighth semester now i am trying to uh, submit the same assignment is that right on our part never or uh, when you uh, when uh, when you are committing self plagiarism you are trying to recycle the parts of it without giving citation just doing the copy paste work or you are trying to utilize a data set from a prior study whether it could be published from a published source unpublished source nothing matters right as a reader i am unaware of it whether it is data conclusion passage anything it is already published but you are not citing your former publication it becomes wrong on our part or you are trying to publish multiple same studies in different journals this is also an act of self plagiarism only so all these kinds of acts of the authors it shows a lack of interest basically they are not ready to create any part of new work it also involves say uh, copy uh, copyright infringement of published works so you are trying to use or you are trying to produce the copyright protected material so you do not have the authorized permission of the copyright holder right uh, no novel no novelty no creativeness no creativity Uh, no original contribution to the existing knowledge except recycling has been done here so this definitely damages the academic integrity because you are misrepresenting your research right so how shall we make this legitimate or authentic wherein you are trying to use your previous work simple you can acknowledge by citing yourself so all of us we have a question how to cite myself how to cite yourself so you can just cite yourself like you cite any other source okay an example what i have put here is citing an unpublished thesis or dissertation it it seems to be in apa format at first we will write the author's last name the initials the year when the work was done then the title followed by the subtitle and the un, in brackets we will write unpublished type of thesis right then the university name where Uh, to where we have submitted this the url or the doi would be there and in the reference entry it says marcus so the last name of the author 
then comma you are writing the initials of the author first name and then the year followed by the title subtitle and published master thesis submitted to the radboud university it makes so clear about citing some some source so apa in text citation would be mercus 2018 what he told we will write there okay yes after seeing so many types of plagiarism so now the thing what we should do is we should avoid plagiarism because plagiarism exists everywhere how do we do that we should quote paraphrase and cite so see intentionally stealing or thieving someone's work or say it is happening accidentally it could be through my negligence or i have forgotten still copying without proper attribution is always it comes under plagiarism what do you do as research scholars just refer to the various credible sources for information first of all don't believe all the information what is present on any kind of sites are true uh, credible sources of for information or any kind of theory evidence anything then what do you do you directly incorporate these sources into a text either you quote or you paraphrase right you can avoid plagiarism how do we do that first we keep the track of our own sources what does this mean just while you are studying something do not forget where an idea came from and uh, unintentionally also do not present it as your own okay please avoid this kind of pitfall how do i do that i just keep some notes organized and i'll compile a list of citations for each reading uh unmistakably you label which thoughts are mine and which aren't in my notes please highlight those statements uh, uh, which are which need citations and please sensibly mark any text that is copied directly from a, some other source how do i do that through with quotation marks in the example what i have given below if you see the red color it it seems to be like a rose but that is red it specifies a claim that requires a source okay now the source is not there for the ones which we have written specified in red color and the blue indicates information that is paraphrased or summarized from a source and the green the last one it seems to be like light green it indicates a direct quotation so through this we can avoid plagiarism being all this then how do i avoid plagiarism when quoting see quoting means uh, you are copying a piece of text entirely of some author or of some writer speaker anybody now you try to introduce it in your own words but try to enclose them in the quotation marks that is simple definition of quoting or you are you can even format it as a block quote and now you correctly credit it to the original author who has written it so quote carefully Uh, uh people might be wondering when should i quote when should i use the quotation marks okay so you are using a exact definition of the original author or say you are referring to the secondary sources it could be the scholarly books journal articles anything then you use quotation marks sometimes what will happen it becomes really unmanageable or difficult for you to rephrase something the original text you cannot rephrase it you cannot put in your own words because you have a fear that it would lose its meaning if i rephrase it so the original passage uh, could be really already very good at expressing or explaining or defining some concepts and i have a feeling that if i paraphrase it it is weakening the ideas the in, the ideas impact now what do i would do what what is there i just copy and i paste it. so then i am putting that and i put them under the quotation marks or sometimes when you are doing the lit uh, literary analysis so wherein you are trying to analyze the, uh, the usage of the language in the original text then also i'll use the quotation marks simply i'll copy whatever the author has told original author i'll put uh, into my paper or you want to maintain the authority and style of the author's words whatever he has told the same style i want to bring in to my paper also then i use quotation marks Uh, or maybe when you are trying to give some kind of evidence 
you want to convince your reader of your uh, say argument interpretation or about some particular topic say for example you are doing uh, interview transcripts or some historical documents are there from some primary sources you would have collected it whatever the source has told same thing you need to put you cannot alter right if he says 50% you cannot put it as 51% definitely yes i was just telling about a concept called block quote so this is something called uh, a long quote which is uh, formatted as a separate block of text see what uh, authors will do instead of using the quotation marks you place the quote on a new line and you try to uh, say indent the entire quote to mark that uh, it is not your words that something uh, that is present in the block quote it is apart from your own words from somewhere else i have taken this so there are rules when to apply this uh, block quote formatting and it is almost all the times it is dependent on the citation style whatever you use see apa block quotes they are like if your words are 40 or longer you use block quotes mla means uh, for four lines of more than four lines of prose or three lines of poetry you use mla block quotes or even in chicago style also something the quotes are longer than 100 words you use them right so one thing i would like to suggest is just avoid being too much dependent on quotes especially in academic writing so to integrate a source to uh, bring in the concept of somebody else into your paper uh, it's habitually best wherein you can paraphrase something in your own words do that instead of quoting right so this helps you fit in the information smoothly and you instead of quoting if you use paraphrasing what will happen your voice would be dominant everywhere inside your paper right but some situations they are like unavoidable wherein i have to use quotes and they are like more appropriate just now i explained where all we should be using the quotes so even in scientific subjects uh, see what will happen the information itself is more important than how it was uh, expressed earlier so quoting will be really kept to a minimum but when you take about the uh, arts and humanities field the well chosen quotes they are often really vital to a good paper we need it in arts and humanities when we come to social sciences also it varies depending upon the topic whatever you have taken see basically if your research it is mainly quantitative you need not have to include many many quotes but if at all it is more say qualitative you have to quote from the collected data right uh, and as a general guideline quotes should uh, uh, take up no more than 5 to 10 percent of your paper because uh, see it will just turn off the mood of your uh, readers if at all you have doubt whether to quote or paraphrase please check with your instructors or supervisors or even you can go through the university guidelines right see an example also says the original text is here and at last you can see the author name as well as the year of publication it is quoted incorrectly in the second paragraph because uh, author citation is not there and at last it has been quoted properly right in quotation marks in the year 1920s and whatever the author has told it is in the quotation marks and at last uh, in brackets when we see there is the author name as well as the year of publication so how do we avoid plagiarism when we are para paraphrasing? Already I told you, paraphrasing is you are using your own words to describe something uh, from a source. So it, it does not just mean swapping a few words here and there or uh, from a copy-pasted text. You should rewrite the author's point in your own words. That's it. And you are showing that I have fully understood this particular concept. Right? See, again, uh, an example is here original text is there and it is paraphrased correctly because see when you compare it with the first paragraph the original text uh, the highlighted things are only changed plastics harm is there in the original text in the paraphrased harm is replaced with hurt in the first line in the original text it says many ways it says a lot of ways so beginning it is replaced with starting see so many things grasping it is uh, replaced by the word understand everything is highlighted so all these words are only just paraphrased this is not the proper way here and they're doing a, some cut uh, paste work at last when you see the 
something is paraphrased well because everything you have put in your own words and in the second first line ending itself you have given according to john back 2021 so everything is there author name year what does he say so uh, completely you have uh, paraphrased the text very well <laughs> then citing your sources correctly see every time you quote or paraphrase one must insert an in text or footnote citation evidently because we are giving recognition to the original author so each citation it must correspond to a full reference in the ref reference list at last whatever we mention or in the bibliography at the end of my paper article thesis anywhere so what am i doing with this i'm acknowledging the source of my information i'm trying to avoid plagiarism clearly i'm helping my readers or the users of the information to locate the source for themselves so that if they intend to learn more they can go obviously go to that site particular site they can refer and it uh, differs according to them there are many citation styles as i told you everything will come with a new rules <clears throat> or any uh, if i'm using apa or mla anything many others are also there so these are widely used ones so any particular style it can be consistently used throughout the uh, text wherever you use and it should be according to the requirement of the your journal wherein you are trying to submit the book the university anywhere you are trying to publish your own work at at the beginning you cannot use mla and then you are coming back to the chicago footnotes no please don't do that Please consistently use any one kind of particular style throughout the text. Again, I have given a APA style, citing a single source. How would I do that? So everything is there in the uh, APA style. And when I'm uh, citing multiple sources also, in in-text cita citation, if you see the first paragraph, it says, Martin's narrative can be read as classic. After that, I'm also quoting one more author, um, Morgan Stern and for newman so both of them i have just used the multiple sources now what can i do in the reference list i am giving the uh, uh, author names separately martin g in the first line and whatever the year in whichever style i am using uh, to cite i am doing that and in the next line i am giving the next author's details so everything would be clear now how do i cite a paraphrase See, once you have paraphrased the required text, I have reworded something. The next step is I have to give credit to the original author. Any kind of uh, in-text citation, depending on uh, wherever you want to submit your uh, text or your paper or your dissertation, you can use it. In the APA in-text citation, how do we use? We use the author last name followed by the year of publication, then the page number. In MLA in-text citation, what do we do? Just the author's last name as well as the uh, page number. In Chicago footnote, completely everything we mentioned. Okay, the author's full name followed by the title of the uh, title, whatever he has written, and where it was published, the issue number, year, page number, DOI, uh, link, whatever I want to give. Okay, people they'll be wondering whether should I paraphrase or whether should I quote or summarize. What should I do? so it's a good idea to paraphrase instead of quoting in most of the cases right because uh, if you have paraphrased something it tells that the learner has fully understood the concept and my words will be leading throughout my paper as i told you the quotes will reduce the uh, readability of my text uh, it does not again it does not mean that you should not you should never quote quotes are also appropriate and i have told the situation where i should where we should quote then paraphrasing versus summarizing is also there so when you want to summarize means what do you do see when you are paraphrasing the text would be something similar or slightly shorter to the original text in a similar way when i'm summarizing means i'll just write down the key points so obviously it should be shorter than the original text uh, paraphrasing and quoting when i tell them they are really the important tools for uh, uh, say presenting precise or say some kind of specific information from the sources but if the information whatever you just want to include it is more general means uh, it is better to summarize it is appropriate to summarize
please try to use a plagiarism checker before submission right so that one can sense the potential plagiarism we all know about this grammarly drill bit turn it in i think it most of us we know so how do these plagiarism checkers work they scan your document they compare it to the database of say web pages and publications then they highlight the passages which appear similar to other texts so please consider using a plagiarism checker yourself you can use them and uh, uh, before we submit it the paper to any university or say journal right so that we ourselves we can find de detect the issues and um, we can avoid either accidental or purposeful plagiarism sometimes i would have overlooked or misplaced citations or i would have uh, mis uh, missed giving the quotation marks right or um, many at times it happens the paraphrased material is very similar to the original text all these things i can avoid if i use a plagiarism checker see we can find differences in uh, precision and safety between the plagiarism checkers uh, this is something which is updated on just two days back 24th of august the best plagiarism checker prize ratings according to a link whatever i have got right please have a checklist or a worksheet so that i can uh, prevent plagiarism what i'll do i'll properly format the original author's exact words and i'm using them as a quote then i correctly paraphrase i correctly rewrite when i'm expressing somebody else's ideas in my own words i include i do not forget to give in, in text citation every time i use the words paragraphs ideas or information from a source right so every cited source it could be counted in uh, my reference list or in my bibliography and please unfailingly follow all these rules of the required citation style you are using and please please avoid your previous works uh, self plagiarism and use an appropriate and reliable plagiarism checker as a final check so why is plagiarism very bad why is it very serious why do we take it seriously see why do universities or any other organizations colleges they impose serious penalties for plagiarism even though it is accidental also because plagiarism i told you in the first slide itself it amounts to theft it is dishonest it harms the person you are plagiarizing as well as the person who is copying it is a barrier to the learning process no creativity i am not learning from somebody else's hard work right it confuses the sources of ideas also because all academic writing it builds on the ideas of others obviously without reading or without referring somebody else i will not get any idea so please allow your readers to noticeably trace the source of those ideas from where did they come from and this results in bad writing also see a patchwork of uh, different unacknowledged sources typically it results in a mess i told you yeah penalties of mild moderate and severe plagiarism it differs see mild academic dishonesty it includes taking illness in third class I just want to skip a class i can am stomach pain fever all this things or i'll be asking my classmate notes for the class i did not attend or i try to collaborate with others or Uh, i delegate my friend to do to work on my assignment or even citing a source that you uh, or me we haven't actually read it but i cite a source in a paper and while i'm writing an article the source cited in it is cited in text but it is not there in reference list okay all this or you have just omitted the quotation marks all this comes under the same mild academic dishonesty Uh, and even the consequences it could be grade penalty or some automatic zero next level is moderate academic dishonesty so i'm cheating the quiz i'm copying in an exam or i'm trying to resubmit already submitted work for a different course but while writing a paper a text is copied from a source with few words say which are altered here and there and the source is paraphrased but no citation so it costs me failing grade on the course similarly when we speak about severe academic dishonesty see it could be fabricating experimental results or say the data so that i want to prove that my hypothesis is proper it could be in a lab environment or i am buying a pre written article 
the students they take test for their friends or somebody else impersonation i told you or say by an article right an article uh, i have done some collaged work of different texts and i just passed off as my original paper or the whole paper would have been written by somebody else i would have bought it right all these acts could result in academic probation or expulsion because these are severe academic acts dishonesty acts so uh, based on the protocols or practices or even you can call it as the code of behavior of the particular university where you are studying or institution if at all you are a student then you would uh, you would face the effect of failing the course or you would be suspended or expelled debarred right or you would be just obligated to attend some workshop like this on plagiarism so that you can understand what plagiarism means so again it depends on whether it is your first offense or you have done it before right so as an academician uh, educator or a professional see plagiarizing extremely damages one's reputation uh, the name and fame what if your professor does that what about his status right he or she might uh, they might lose the research funding or even their job or uh, extreme worst cases they can face the legal consequences also for copyright infringement so if a paper is sub submitted to even a reputed journal right they are not just automatically checked through these tools but they are read by the editor two or three peer reviewers the experts in the field because they'll try to uh, catch the things that slip past the plagiarism checkers also and these issues they are pointed out to the author or the authors and then they are given an opportunity to either correct the paper and they can resubmit the same and then the corresponding authors host in institution will also get the information about these kinds of dishonesty acts and the chief editor of the journal he or she they have the power they can take any kind of direct action they can reject the paper then they might not provide you any opportunity to resubmit or they might put your name as an author in the blacklisting authors right everything is based on the severity of the plagiarized content okay so these are the best plagiarism checkers of 2022 list the updated list the best plagiarism checker when we say that so what what do how do we think it should, we can use it it should be able to notice plagiarism most accurately uh, so even if the original phrases they have been altered it should be accurate the tool should offer a say a uh, Effect or all inclusive plagiarism report is what we should get, right? So, these are the top plagiarism checkers based on the amount of plagiarism detected, is what I have presented. And uh, uh, we can just directly copy and paste the text here and check for the percentage of copied content. Okay, we should check the positives and negatives of each of them. Yeah, we are already running short of time. In another less than uh, 10 minutes, I'll just try to wind up. Uh, first one we have a uh, scriber review so they claim it as the they access they have they access to the biggest and most varied database and they can detect the most plagiarism for maximum source types even if it is for the published or unpublished text or even the text that has been paraphrased and they have a good level of user friendliness trustworthiness is what they claim and even the scriber they refund the customers but all they are not satisfied for any reason it seems they do not uh, store or they do not sell any documents and the data is automatically deleted after 30 days of your checking and students they can opt to manually delete their document once their checking is done and there is live support and there is customer responsive customer support they offer the own sources so that they can check our self plagiarism also they are giving a, a limited free version because we all know quality comes at a price. And we directly cannot work in this tool. That is the main disadvantage. But the results they claim to be, they are presented in a clear as well as in a downloadable overview. And different colors are there. If there is some plagiarized text, which is used for different sources, so that it is very, very easy for the users to assess each plagiarism issue separately. Next, when we talk about the Q-text review, uh, again, uh, it is one of the disadvantages that we cannot directly work in the tool. There is something called citation assistant. If at all we have missed to add some citations, it identifies it. 
okay there is help center with faqs to help us to answer so it can get up to 2500 words and it is a free trial trial but after that we need to subscribe it so per month cost is there it is given on their website everything you can check so same colors are used for different sources right uh, but we cannot they can only see some orange color for partial matches and red color for full matches it seems okay it is in a downloadable format and this tool also it does not store or uh, re upload your text they will not save your text uh, you can contact them through phone email or you can submit them a help request then the grammarly review most of us would have used this so it catches the actual plagiarized source but nothing is available in apa style it seems we are trying to offer a language as well as citation assistant also uh, most of the times even if it uh, finds out the right source the matches are only partial it seems they are not highlighting the entire plagiarized section again they are not uh, uh, sharing the documents with the third parties so we can trust it there is a character limit everything i have put it uh, uh, ms jayalakshmi madam she will give you the pptts you can check by yourself so by formatting the grammarly temporarily removes the original formatting it seems but after once the plagiarism is checked they'll restore the layout and you can download the document again same thing character limit is there they'll support the page with tips you will get tutorials we have faqs and it is possible to submit a question through a form but there are there is no live support message unicheck review is the port one it also tries to uh, identify the actual plagiarized source uh, but not completely if the text is edited right the accuracy it varies they are not also they are also not selling any documents or documents whatever they have uploaded and without our permission they are not share they will try to provide live support there is a help center tutorial guide everything so my documents your documents they are stored securely okay so one more thing is they are not giving they are not offering same highlight colors are there for different sources so as a reader i am not able to uh, distinguish between which is my source what is the match text everything right again all the same thing it provides numerous found sources in the sidebar as you can see the example but no clear guidance on what should be done if you find something similarity right okay next is the plate scan review yeah uh, so according to a site they say this plate scan it was incapable to find the most of the plagiarized sources even with the edited text also uh, it was uh, able to provide full matches for regular internet sources web pages all this thing but it is not really advantageous for the scholarly sources okay the term it has user friendly but same colors for same sources again it is really impossible to work directly in this particular tool even they they are not uh, they are trustworthy no sharing or selling of documents are there right everything if if at all as a user if i agree if i give them the permission they can re upload everything my paper in their plage scans internal plagiarism database right no live support as such uh, they are providing an email address for any queries we ask we have pre post seo review almost the same uh, only for the uh, verbatim and uh, uh, paraphrasing plagiarism they are using a different color in this tool but most of the times they say uh, the tools judgment is becoming wrong and other types also same color is used so uh, regardless even of using a plagiarism sorry premium plan the website it is showing many unconnected and distracting ads it seems i have not used this okay then coming to the plagiarism detector review so only it shows the matches for the first sources and after that till the end of the document it was not able to process a document it seems when it was checked and uh, the report is unclear difficult to read because same colors have been used and after a maximum of 1000 words you have to pay you have to subscribe for this and for other go no live support uh, but the website it has a help request form this we have viper review almost same it gives a average performance for all the uh, scholarly uh, source types it could be the journal articles dissertations really it is struggling to find similarities between the edited text 
and even the downloadable report it is hard to read it seems okay uh, compel SEO review even this it can find only a few plagiarized sources it seems uh, same problem with the edited text one cannot identify the correct source and even plagiarized parts are also not highlighted and the report it only shows general area that matches the source this is limiting its helpfulness for the users hard to review and we cannot solve the potential cases of plagiarism then at last the tenth one pro writing aid view similar to the about two so uh, tools it also shows matches for only the first few sources and no matches at all till the end of the document right it was unable to process a document of a bigger size at an instance when it was used so same color for all the sources again making it harder to differentiate between them so this report will be clear but only it is showing the matches for the highlighted text only uh, it has it offers language and style tools but something comes at a rate you can check uh, again at their website it is not offering any live support but there is a page with FAQs, it seems. They also have a uh, help request form, right? And even they, they are not selling any documents. They are not storing any uploaded texts. So scribble.com, they have analyzed all this. From there, I have got the comparison of all these top 10 updated uh, just two days before they have updated this list. So they have analyzed about all these plagiarism tools and they have given the above report. And I myself have not used uh, three to four sources and as we all know that advantages and disadvantages they are like a, uh, a two faces of a same coin so the information whatever has been provided about these plagiarism checkers it, it is again based on a few instances of their usage when they had used it it has worked in such a manner so it may work differently with me differently with you with differently with your text my text individuals right and however we all know that paid versions will always make some differences definitely so pay checkers because they have access to larger databases right people will be asking me about the free and paid checkers see unfortunately most of the free tools they are like misleading in their advertising when we compare the same with the paid ones see when we uh, see the average plagiarism percentage free tools they are just offering 21 percent wherein pay tools 41 percent scriber they claim to give average percentage of 95 percent i don't know uh, it's something like self-promotion. So they are not detecting plagiarism, either free or paid tools. They are not able to find the full matches. And pricing also often it is misleading and uh, confusing subscription plans are there with the paid ones. Word limits are also very less and it varies with the subscription plan, how much we pay according to that. So most of the times, yes, it is trustworthy in paid tools, in uh, free tools, we just need to be very cautious right user experience also with free tools we are not we don't get any kind of response or live support but with paid we'll get it to a certain extent sometimes with uh, free tools it is not downloadable the reports uh, with this paid versions it is downloadable right and the scriber they claim to have some color coded clickable text downloadable everything right we need to check it ourselves so to conclude, I would like to say the concern of this plagiarism, uh, it varies. It is depending on the type of plagiarism and the context in which it is occurring, basically. So see, plagiarism, it can be detected by your professor or reviewer for that matter, or any expert, readers say, how can we uh, detect? Because if at all that tone, the formatting or the style of your text is different in different parts, as I explained something in patchwork plagiarism. Right? If your paper is like that, if your article or your thesis is like that, or if at all I am familiar with a plagiarized source from where you have taken. Last week I have read this article, today you have come and you have submitted me the same. So now I know the source. I can easily detect the plagiarism. So even many universities, they use plagiarism detection, uh, yeah, detection softwares. Uh, you yourselves, from the list, whatever I have given, apart from that, there are many plagiarism checker tools. Please consider using a plagiarism checker here to submitting any of your papers. But please be cautious about their uh, rules, regulations, everything, whether they are uh, uh, storing your documents or not. 
but most of the times what is happening the plagiarism checkers they are consistently they are trying to evolve themselves they are trying to improve themselves but still they are not able to recognize everything that's why the plagiarism it's, it's growing like mushroom in particularly in academia right so now if at all you find higher easier similarity score in plagiarism checkers tools whatever you use please try to address your original text because it means something you have plagiarized and common facts common knowledge widely known information or facts which are easily verifiable say for example amazon is the world's largest tropical rainforest our pm is uh, narendra modi ji all these we all know easily verifiable facts and this does not need a citation to prove right these can be used directly so when you what is the usage of uh, citation if you use your sources it does not if you cite your sources it does not constitute plagiarism so make the quote as short as possible please use quotation marks or use block quotes but properly try to uh, cite the sources from where you have used so when you paraphrase just rewrite the information from the source in your own words and please use the source so that you can support your own reasoning as well as argumentation but please cite the paraphrase text also and people will be asking me what score is reasonable man so a score around 5% is okay okay reasonable plagiarism so even if your score is something between somewhere between 5 to 10% you will need to review it the each similarity and please decide whether it is necessary to revise your work or not any score higher than 10% it is really bothersome so in total i would like to wind up saying that try not to plagiarize please say no to plagiarism yes uh, thank you all so if you have any if you have any queries you are most welcome uh, excuse me madam uh, myself dr shamshad begum yes ma'am uh, it was a very nice presentation regarding plagiarism plagiarism has become a common term nowadays because i have been into teaching since 32 years but in teacher education uh, since 20 years so now it has become very compulsory for uh, all of us uh, to public to make publications and yearly for the improvement of cas career advance scheme and promotions etc so uh, my question was whatever previous papers which i had publi made publications of so can i put them or assemble them into one book like my own papers yes madam you can do that but definitely you have to so source the you have to cite yeah. the source yeah, yeah. you have to cite yeah, yourself I yes i have written that in my the, this uh, in call messages so i will cite which year i have uh, attended the conference or i made the paper a publication so putting that all the papers as a single book i can can i make that that yes, was my query you can, you can do that but also check with your uh, uh, wherever you have you would have given a copyright form right you have given permission to the publisher you need to take permission from them also because it is their content now once you have written that agreement and you have given and yes when you are when once you get permission from them you need to cite yourself then everything absolutely it's fine to use your own uh, papers text anything madam thank you so much ma'am thank you very much for a beautiful presentation thank you ma'am is the page number mandatory for apa format index citation uh yes it is it is compulsory for apa apa style it is i have given the example also so how is it for apa citation how is it for mla format and chicago the top 3 i have given i have given the uh, ppt slides also to uh, ms jayalakshmi madam you can collect it from her you will get a better understanding if at all you have missed it in my presentation while i was presenting in mathematics when we use symbols var variables are shown in uh, plag report how to avoid this sorry mathematics when we use symbols variables are shown in plag report how to avoid this is there a question typed here ma'am uh, yes ma'am maheshwari ma'am can you please elaborate yeah yeah i have one here hello ma'am good evening so yes yes ma'am good evening so what do you uh, mean by this uh, variables ma'am in which format are they 
no when we are uh, when we are collecting some formulas or some other abbreviations in algebras and uh, graph theory or we are mm. using the same notations we are again get uh, it is again shown in the plag group after checking plagiarism it is again shown in the plag report even though we cited the paper we are getting that how to avoid that ma'am no ma'am these are like general uh, things no ma'am whatever the symbols you are using whatever the variables are there in the mathematics the yeah, formulas yeah. everything we have so we have not come under plagiarism symbols. no no so it does not come under plagiarism madam okay 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 ma'am no. because i told you even at last while concluding some oh. general information is there we all know about it some a plus b whole square you are using i am aware of that you are aware of that everybody in the world we are aware of it or at least most of us we are aware of it so this general information the formulas whatever you are using it is general it is to everybody so this does not come under plagiarism madam no sometimes it will come under red color uh, text ma'am so uh, how to it avoid happens, that it happens it it happens madam because each and every it depends on like it, it varies from each and every tool whatever we use plagiarism tools but still okay. if it is a general information madam it does not come under plagiarism even though if you don't cite also no problem as i said okay. so examples i said mm. okay ma'am one more doubt uh, name and official address are also coming under plagiarism after checking the plagiarism is coming ma'am how to avoid that no ma'am no need to check all those things ma'am only okay. the text okay. or the thing inside the whatever you have whatever you have written only those things are to be checked when you are just uploading the document ma'am please try to avoid that section reference section all these things okay okay yeah thank you thank you yes ma'am um, are there yes. any paraphrasing tools for safe use see safe use means even i cannot guarantee you if at all the paraphrasing tools they are for free it is really we have to check double check uh, whether what is it their policy their company policy everything if at all it is paid means i told you the even top 10 plagiarism checking tools paraphrasing tools are also there Uh, so most of them if if it is like a paid version they are safe to use most of the times they are safe to use how to avoid mistakes during paraphrasing during citation when uh, writing research papers <laughs> okay how do we avoid mistakes during paraphrasing see first of all if you just first try to understand what the concept is what is the original author trying to tell to me what is his what what was his intention basically if i understand what was the gist what is the author trying to tell me i can write it i can rephrase it in my own words so obviously i'm trying there will be no mistakes if once i understand if i don't understand please i'll go i'll check with my professor or some expert for that matter who can help me and then i'll put it in my uh, own words i will reword it okay even while uh, during citation during citation how what are what mistakes do you do definitely if you are giving proper citation style it could be as I, as we discussed it is apa mla chicago many more are there a list of um, styles are there citation styles are there take any one according to the journal or your university rules so whatever you have taken from some other source though paraphrased also please uh, write their uh, the author's name or the year everything according to the citation style try to cite each and every source then there will be no such kind of mistakes as soon as you refer to one source write it down as simple as that how to publish a paper if after submitting paper if you get plagiarism will they refund money so how to publish a paper uh, if after wow. submitting paper uh, if you get plagiarism they refund money so uh, before checking the plagiarism they'll not ask you to pay usually no journal will ask you only first you will submit your paper uh, before getting published it is called manuscript you will uh, you will uh, give them you will submit your manuscript what are all the changes are there they will also check for plagiarism once or twice their experts will read for it once it is accepted only you are going to pay so if you are paying prior to your, your plagiarism check or prior to your peer review please don't go for such kind of fake journals once everything is checked only they'll ask you to pay so please be aware any other questions you can post in the chat box or you can unmute and interact with ma'am she is there to help you
so people have said nice presentations informative session thank you for that and people are asking for ppts yes definitely jayalakshmi ma'am will share with you all what all i have presented so any other doubts you can unmute yourself you can ask me any doubts even basic ones definitions anything anything are welcome you can ask me anything good evening ma'am good evening uh, ma'am this is dr shanti from kamadino arts and science college ma'am ma'am am, am i audible ma'am Yes, yes, ma'am. Please go ahead. Then, uh, like in some of the universities, like uh, before submitting the PhD thesis, uh, they allow to um, uh, check plagiarism, and uh, later on, if the plagiarism is more than ten percent, they ask to reduce the plagiarism. Like that, that is that. And in some of the universities, like if uh, like we check plagiarism, and uh, we uh, go for again plagiarism checking in the university, there it is showing, it will show hundred percent, ma'am. So uh, like uh, the uh, that time the uh, the university people they are scolding, ma'am. So like, uh, is it um, not uh, like ethical? Like uh, if we uh, check the plagiarism and again we go for plagiarism. Check at in the at the university, ma'am. So you now what is happening is once if you have checked it, so your paper would have gone to their database. So okay. it could be the published source or unpublished source. It says completely everything is there. Again, yeah. if you are going for rechecking, it is showing hundred percent. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if you are using this free tools, ma'am, there is an option uh, so that wherein you can uh, uh, delete your document without getting uploaded there. You can do that. Then your paper will not be anywhere in their database again and again. You can be re you can recheck. The thing is, this free uh, pl plagiarism checker um, checker is there, no, ma'am? Is it authentic, ma'am? Can we believe that, ma'am? <laughs> ma'am, most of the students, uh, scholars, they will pose me uh, this question. But as you said, see, you would have used a. Uh, did you use a free plagiarism checker tool or uh, paid ones, ma'am? No, paid one, ma'am. Okay, paid Urkund ones. software, Urkund. Urkund software, yeah, that, that's yeah. good, ma'am. That's a good software. But again, you check it with Urkund only. Yeah, the university will check with again Urkund only. Okay, see this Urkund. What will happen with this? You you would have uh, just ask them. You can request them, ma'am, if it is a paid version, to just take your paper out of the database and recheck the same. Recheck uh -huh. your paper again. So that can be done. Because in paid version also they'll save you your papers. The thing is they are not going to share it with somebody else. Once you have uploaded it, they have it in their database. That is the problem. Okay, ma'am. Okay. So this is a problem because some of the universities they are permitting to check plagiarism uh, before we submit our thesis, but and some of the, the universities they are not uh, allowing us to check plagiarism, ma'am. Like right. before we go for a plagiarism check at the university, uh, then it is better, ma'am. Whenever is your due date to submit, submit them uh, before some a week's time, so that the university itself they'll only check for the plagiarism. It is yes, better. <laughs> Actually, that that uh, no, but in that case, the guide has to uh, like uh, justify, ma'am. Why that uh, plagiarism was there like that and all? They are asking for justification and all, ma'am. So because of that only, we are very much bothered. So what is it they are asking, ma'am? The university ma they people ask they are asking for justification. Uh, yeah, justification. Uh huh. Why that so, plagiarism has come like that? So hundred percent plagiarism. What you told that thing? No, they scolded. We are here to check plagiarism. Then what is the need to check uh -oh. plagiarism by yourself like that? Oh, okay, yeah, as you told the uh, the rules, protocols, everything it differs from university to university. It is yes, better if they are checking. Uh, allow them only to check, ma'am. The thing yes, is, you have used the Arkan, the paid version. You please ask them, send them a request, uh, mail or something, or they have uh, live uh, support also, I guess. If you have a paid version, please request them to remove your uh, paper, ma'am. This is what you can do, and the university people they'll recheck it again. They'll do it. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am.
ma'am sorry for uh, interruption i am ahishuri again yes ma'am yeah in work on the, uh, there is a problem like this we have to uh, set up the futures in such a way that uh, we cannot check it immediately ma'am because if we check today means it will take another uh, one week or 10 days time to to do the rechecking okay so the university has to redo the formation or features of the workun software uh, so that we can check frequently ma'am that university has to do that uh -huh. okay because it is a paid version for the university yeah 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 okay so whatever are your concerns ma'am uh, the uh, authority the concerned authority from your university they can send them a mail requesting yes. or saying that yeah. you have some problems some issues are there so that they can rework on this Yes, we that we have faced the same problem in our university. We have faced the same problem uh -huh. in our university, and we requested that, and they uh, redo redid the software again. And now we are not facing that problem. Okay, ma'am. Okay. So most of the times, the problems are not only with the free plagiarism tools, but also with paid versions. I keep listening, ma'am. So even in uh, Karnataka, also most of the universities, private colleges, they'll pay, they'll get the uh, paid versions, but they say often they say. The report is not in down downloadable format. We are not understanding what needs to be done for the similarity index. So many kinds of issues are still prevailing, even with the paid versions. Also, they have some kind of uh, uh, problematic subscription plans. All these things, not only with one or two plagiarism checkers, with most of them, this is the problem. That to paid version itself. Any other questions? I think there are no more questions. Somebody has asked for how to session on how to publish a paper. You need to request it uh, with uh, Miss Jayalakshmi, Madam, so that she'll organize the same for you. I think there are no more questions, ma'am. Shall we wind up, ma'am? Sure, ma'am. On behalf of Anna Velet Arts and Science College, Ambatur Chennai, IQAC, and Department of BCom, Accounting and Finance, in association with IOT Academy, we thank Dr. Sri Ranjini, ma'am, for the enlightening and enriching session. We thank you once again for the amazing presentation, ma'am. We thank you for enhancing your understanding with the commendable presentation. We thank you very much for your efforts, ma'am. We thank the faculties of Anna Velet Arts and Science College and the participants for joining the session today. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much for your efforts, ma'am. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thanks for the opportunity uh, for all the organizers as well as the participants, faculties, students, scholars, everybody. And uh, my special thanks to uh, Ms. Jayalakshmi Rajarajan, ma'am, for this uh, opportunity again. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Right. Can I just leave the session, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank right. you. Ma Thank you. Kindly submit the feedback using the feedback form using the link that has been posted in the chat box. Thank you all. Have a great day.